Hello and welcome to another NGen Math 6 lesson by eMath Instruction. Today we're going to be doing Unit 5, Lesson 3 on variables and algebraic expressions. All right, so you know this unit in Math 6 is all about algebra, okay? And probably the basis of most algebra is the idea of a variable. And then once you have variables, you then have what are known as algebraic expressions. So let's get right into what those two things are in the next slide, and then we'll start working through some exercises. All right, here we go. So variables and expressions. A variable is a symbol, most often a letter, used to represent a number or a quantity that's either unknown, you just don't know what it is, unspecified, so maybe you know what it is, but you're keeping it to yourself, you know, or it's changing. That is actually literally variable. Variable means something that is not constant, something that changes. Um, very often, the letters that we use for variables are letters towards the end of the alphabet, like X, T, N, Y. You will see variables at the beginning of the alphabet. You'll see A, B, C, all of that. Sometimes we'll even like exhaust apparently all 26 letters of the alphabet and we'll go to the Greek alphabet. We'll start grabbing Greek characters, but you don't have to worry about that so much this year. All right. Now that's what a variable is. It's just a letter that we've used to stand for a number that's unknown, unspecified, or it's changing. An expression though, an expression is a combination of variables and normal numbers called constants using operations like addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and exponentiation. So like x plus 8 or 2t plus 7 or n minus 8 or x to the second plus y to the second. Right? All of those are expressions because they, don't, they aren't just like a single variable. They're a variable that then has some kind of calculation involved in it. All right. That being said, let's jump right into the first exercise and start to do some work with variables and expressions. All right. Exercise number one. Let the letter n stand for some number we have not specified. Write expressions using n for each of the following. All right. This is very, very simple stuff, right? So n is some number we don't know. If you want to think about it as a number, though, feel free. Think to yourself, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to think about n as being the number 3, right? So when it says 4 added to the number, you could think about, well, what would it look like if I added 4 to 3? And I know the answer is 7, right? But it would literally look like 3 plus 4. Well, if I'm doing 4 added to this random number n, then I will literally just have n plus 4. By the way, because of the special property of addition called the commutative property, it wouldn't be incorrect to write it as 4 plus n, but that's really n added to 4. This is 4 added to n. And it does make a difference with some things, so it's, it's good to kind of get the order right. Letter b, 7 subtracted from the number. Here it makes a difference, 7 subtracted from the number, because we must have n minus 7. If we have 7 minus n, that is very different, because then that's n subtracted from the number 7. Letter C, 5 times the number. Now, here's something that's very, very important. Remember, we're not going to use that multiplication symbol anymore. We're not going to even use the dot. This is how we're going to write down 5 times the number. Right? Any time we have a number sitting right beside a variable, pretty much universally to the left of it, not to the right of it, you won't see something like this ever. Okay? That, that like for most math teachers, it ugh, makes my skin crawl. All right? But the plain fact is, if you see a number, well, I was trying to erase that, it didn't work. Um, if you see a number sitting right beside a letter, it means multiply. This means 5 times n. 5 times n. Okay? And we'll see that over and over today and in basically every lesson that involves algebra from now on out. All right, let's take a look at D. The number subtracted from 10. Again, notice the difference between these two. 7 subtracted from the number and the number subtracted from 10. That then is 10 minus n. Right? Letter E, the number divided by 8. And again, we're not going to use the division symbol, that standard kind of symbol with the dot above and below. We will always use the fraction bar to show division in algebraic expressions. So the number divided by 8 is going to be shown like that, not 
like this. All right. And again, we're going to show it that way because it's just, it's, it's a more compact way of showing the division. This is just, it takes up more room. There's nothing actually incorrect about that. It just takes up more room and you'll never see it in an algebraic expression. So best to do it this way. And finally, how about the number squared? That's easy enough, right? Whenever we square a number, it means raising the number to the second exponent or the second power. So there's our n squared. All right. So it's very important, this idea that we could take a letter, use it as a number that we don't know, you know, 5 times 7, right? 5 times n, right? 56 divided by 8, n divided by 8, right? And we just use it as sort of a, a placeholder. All right, let's keep working with more variables and expressions. Well, oh, maybe. No, there we go, finally. All right, here we go. Exercise number two. Evaluate each of the following algebraic exp expressions if x is equal to 6. Show the substitution. All right, so let's talk about this a little bit. Now, the, actually, doing this problem is, is, is quite simple, really. But at the end of the day, algebraic expressions, expressions that have a variable in them, have absolutely no value. They have no numerical value unless you're given the value of the variable, right? So x plus 4 is just x plus 4. But once you're told that x equals 6, then this expression has a value. Specifically, it has the value of 6 plus 4, which is equal to 10. Right? So simple. You know, if you're given an algebraic expression and the value of the variable or variables, there could be more than one in an expression, then all you have to do is substitute, that's what it's called, substitute that value in figure out then what the calculation gives you, and that's the value of the expression. So something like this, given that it's pretty new, 7x, again, that means 7 times x. Let's not use the multiplication symbol when we do the substitution. Let's use parentheses. So again, it seems weird, but that is the same as 7 times 6, which is equal to 42. All right. Why don't you really quickly pause the video, show your substitution, and figure out the value of both of these expressions when x is 6. All right, simple enough. Let's do this one, x over 2. Right? This will be equal to 6 divided by 2, which is equal to 3. These are very easy calculations. This will be equal to 14 minus 6, and this will be equal to 8. Now, it's probably very tempting because each one of these algebraic expressions had a single operation, right? Addition, multiplication, division, subtraction. It would be very tempting to just look at it and not show this first step, right? Show the first step. It's very important to show your substitution. That way, especially in multi-operation calculations, which we're going to get to next, if you've made a mistake somewhere along the line, your teacher can help you rectify that mistake. They can find it and help you correct it. All right, let's keep going and do some more complicated substitution. Here we go, exercise number three. Consider the expression 3n plus 7. Letter A, when evaluating this expression, which is done first, adding 7 to n or multiplying n by 3? All right, pause the video now and you answer that question. Which one comes first, the addition or the multiplication? All right, well, hopefully you said, oh, I know my order of operations. And my order of operations says, I got to do that product before I do that sum. So, multiplication. Multiply first. The only way we'd add first is if it was in parentheses, but it's not. So, letter B now. Now that we know how to evaluate the expression, let's do it in letter B. Evaluate this expression for n equals 2 and for n equals 5. Show your substitution. So again, this expression means to do 3 times n, get a result, and then add 7. When I substitute in n equals 2, this is what it's going to look like. Again, I'm going to use parentheses for multiplication, right? I'm then going to do the multiplication first. 3 times 2 is 6. And then I'll do 6 plus 7, and I'll get 13. All right. What I'd like you to do is pause the video really quickly and figure out the value of the expression when n is equal to 5. All right. 
Let's do it. So when n is equal to 5, we're going to have 3 times 5 plus 7. We need to do that multiplication first. 3 times 5 is 15. And 15 plus 7 gives me 22. All right. So this was the first expression that we had that was a two-operation expression. We had both multiplication and we had addition. And the key there, of course, was that we had to know to multiply first and add last due to order of operations. We're going to be faced with more of those choices in the next exercise, so let's get to it right away. Here we go, exercise number four. Evaluate each of the following expressions for the value of the variable given. All right, here we go. Now, every single one of these particular problems has two operations in it. Okay, and you have to decide in each case after substituting what comes first. So let's talk about a couple of them together and then we'll have you work on some of them on your own. All right, so letter A, I've got x divided by 2 minus 6 when x is equal to 20. So I'm going to just substitute this thing in. All right, I'm going to get 20 divided by 2 minus 6. Now, one of the great things about showing division with the fraction bars, there's not much of a question here. It would actually be kind of weird to do 20 minus 6, get a result, and then divide by 2, given that the 6 isn't up there in the numerator. So it's pretty obvious in this one that I need to do 20 divided by 2 and get 10, and then 10 minus 6 and get 4. By the way, if this is feeling a lot like the last lesson when we did order of operations, that makes a lot of sense. You know, all we're doing here is taking these algebraic expressions, right? They're just expressions that involve both numbers and variables. We're replacing the variable with particular value. In this case, we'll put in n equals 10, and then using oper order of operations to figure out the final answer. Let's take a look at letter B, right? 5 plus n squared for n equals 10. So when I substitute this in, it's never bad to take the value of the variable and put it in parentheses. So then when I look at this, it is visually makes more sense that I'm going to square the 10 first and then I'm going to add it to 5. We're not going to do 5 plus 10 and get 15 and then square the result. We're going to do 10 times 10, right? And that's going to be 100. And then 5 plus 100, obviously, is 105. Okay, now I'd like you to pause the video and do the rest of them with a little fair warning, right? Letter C and I think letter E should be pretty easy for you. Letter D involves a fraction and letter F involves a couple of, uh, a couple of decimals, but you know the math on how to do it. So just take your time and figure out the value of each of these expressions for the indicated value of the variable. Pause the video now. All right, and again, this one is absolutely key with order of operations, right? Because what we've got in letter C is we've got 20 minus 4 times 2. And it's really important to do that 4 times 2 first and not do the 20 minus 4 first. We do 20 minus 4, we'll get an entirely different answer if we then multiply by 2. In this case, we get the answer 12. All right, let's do a little work with a fraction. No problem, let me just bring this up to the top of the screen. I'm going to, again, substitute in the 8, right? I need to find 3 fourths of 8. That's going to be the same as 3 times 1 fourth of 8, right? 1 fourth of 8 is just 2. So 3 times 2 is 6, plus 5 gives me 11. Little side note on this one, right? More and more what you'll see me do when I multiply a whole number, especially by a fraction, is I'll do something like this. 4 goes into 8 two times, and then 3 times 2 is just equal to 6, right? Anytime we multiply a whole number by a fraction, we're always combining a division with a multiplication. We're dividing the whole number by the denominator, and then we're multiplying the result by the numerator. Either way, we get 11. Let's take a look at letter E. Letter E, right, we've got c equals 4. And again, it's very important to know that I'm going to do the 4 squared first, and I'm going to get 16. Then I'll do 3 times 16. And again, if you need to do that over on the side of your paper, that's completely okay. I'm going to do the decimal one on the side of my paper in a moment, but ultimately we get 48 here. Now, 
Again, all of these, the numbers have been relatively nice, maybe with the exception of letter D. Letter F is a little bit trickier simply because of the decimals. But let's take n equals 7, let's substitute it into this algebraic expression and see what we get, right? So we're going to get 1.25 times 7 plus 3.50. I like doing math in my head, especially multiplication, but sometimes I like to go over on the side of my paper, and I, you know, I have to do a 125 times seven, so, you know, do a little bit of this, 14, 17, carry the one. So all of this is 8.75, and I've got to add to it 3.50. There's more decimal work here than anything else and we get 1225. Seems like a problem involving money, right? And maybe it is a problem involving money. There's just no context. All right, so that's it, right? Taking an algebraic expression, a value for its variable or variables, substituting it in and finding the value of the expression. Let's take a look at one last problem. Exercise number five. A rectangle has a length represented by L and its width represented by W. Evaluate the expression 2w plus 2l if w equals 6 and l equals 10. All right, great. There's no reason why a mathematical expression, right? Here's a mathematical expression or an algebraic expression can't have more than one variable. It can have tons of variables in it, right? So what I'd like you to do is I would like you to take 2w plus 2l and I'd like you to evaluate it for when w equals 6 feet and l equals 10 feet. You can just use this space right here. Pause the video now and figure out what you get. All right, let's do it. So, right, I'm going to put in what? Six for W and 10 for L. And again, here's where order of operations comes in, right? I have to know, well, I'm gonna do this two times six and this two times 10 first. So that's gonna give me 12 plus 20, and that's going to give me 32. All right. Now, the second part of this question, what does the value of this expression tell us about the rectangle? What, what does that 32 give us about this rectangle? Pause the video now and see if you can figure that out. Well, I'm hoping you said the perimeter, right? It gives us the perimeter, the distance around the figure. Right, because really what the perimeter is, is two widths plus two lengths, right? If I take the width and I multiply it by two, then I get the sum total of these two. If I take the length and I multiply it by two, I get the sum total of these two, and then I add them together and I get the total distance around the rectangle, otherwise known as its perimeter. All right, oftentimes mathematical expressions have a meaning. And it will be our job as we move through this year and through the grades in being able to look at a mathematical expression and kind of interpret what it's telling us about the context of the problem that we're working in. Let's finalize this lesson. So today, we saw the idea of variables and expression. Variables are just letters or symbols that are used to replace numbers that we don't know. That's essentially it, right? And expressions are a combination of variables and numbers using operations like addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and our favorite now, exponents, all right? Those expressions, you know, kind of don't have values until we give you the value of a variable. And once I say, hey, x is equal to 17, then, you know, x plus three, that has to be equal to 20, all right? And it's very simple to figure out the values of expressions as long as we know our order of operations. All right, I just want to thank you for joining me for another NGen Math 6 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler, and until next time, keep thinking and keep solving problems.